right, guys, got the Bronco in here in the shop. Uh, Pop's putting the lift under there. Get this thing lifted up. And uh, I've got some manual hubs on here. So those, these automatic hubs click in sometimes, sometimes they don't. One side seems to work better. The other side just seems to click a lot. We tried cleaning them and doing some stuff. So I went ahead and bought some manual ones. Then you don't ever have to worry about them not working correctly again. You get out and you turn them on their own. So uh, really a lot better, a lot more off-road capable. So especially now that it's starting to get cold, if we get any snow down here, it'll be a lot of fun. So get those manual hubs installed, I'll show you how to do that. Okay guys, driver's side wheel is off. And you may have some little retainers that are on here that may have to be popped off. Mine don't have any, so this just slides off. That's the inside of the automatic hub there. All of this is going away. So the new hubs are all fully built. We just gotta start taking this stuff apart here. So let me show you the new ones. Okay, there's the, the hub and that's like the, the inside there. That's the top, these are the mile marker hubs. This is the conversion kit. So when you go from auto to manual, you have to use this conversion kit on there. And uh, it's just a few little inside parts that just lay in there together. So that's both of them side by side. So there's not much to it. We just gotta pull the other stuff out. Okay, here's the instructions. It shows you essentially what to do on changing those out. You can pause that and read through there. All right, so here is your little lock that goes in the end, this little ring. Under that is your washer and it is splined on there. And then we've got another piece behind that. So we'll show you each piece as it comes off. But this piece has to come out of here first. So I'm gonna work that out. All right, first thing I do is take this clip off Let's get something to go around both sides. Let's see if that'll come off there. There it is. And it went flying like they said it probably would. <laughs> All right, so next, take off this washer and it's splined. You're going to need that later. And this little cam washer and everything came with it down in here. We're going to pull the rest of this off. Okay. I'll slide the cam out of here there it is there's the cam that's the automatic one and we won't need this we'll stick it back down here with the old hub drop it in there so now we're down to here this is another uh, spacer in the rear these can come off yeah this is your thrust bearing thrust bearing and then there's a keyway in here which it says that you can probably get it out with a magnet or something like that. Um, I've seen where, and there's a couple of things that, that they were actually able to get this nut off of here uh, without taking it, but it's supposed to lock down on it so this nut doesn't come off. So we'll see how that comes out of there. If you have a socket big enough to go on here, which is pretty huge, uh, you can take it off that way. If not, we're gonna try to tap it around through there if we can get it to loosen up. All right, guys, so you just wanna tap this nut back and forth just enough to line these splines up on the little key here. And there it is, look at that. Pull it out with a magnet. So that drops in there and it locks into those splines. So if it's too tight, left or right, then it's not gonna come out. So as soon as we got it lined up, this thing just slid right out of there. So now we should be able to just get that nut right off. Okay, keyway is out of the way. Now we should be able just to slide this nut back perfectly easily. Hey, it did, look at that. Perfect. All right, now we can get it with our hand. So now we're just gonna pull this thing off here. Let's see what it looks like. So there's your bearing coming out of there. So it's a good idea to go ahead and repack this bearing or replace them if they're shot. And then you got an inner bearing also. So then you have to take the brake off and the hub out and get everything to that. It's getting a little tight here near the end.
spread from this field. It's a little bigger. Yeah. Put your stuff on the end there. Yeah. Put a big old pair of pliers or the proper socket. Well, I have no idea what size that socket would be, but it's going to be big. Is it getting tighter or is it back? It's a little tight. Yeah, it's a little crunchy. Hit it in. Go. Hang on to that. Put up there in our tool pile. Spare part pile. And there's our bearing. Definitely need some new grease on it. Take that. It's probably a tight one too. There, there is, but we can't get out without pulling the rest of the hub out. So everybody says just go ahead and repack that one and then shove some grease in there. Yeah. And it'll be good enough to go underwater. Okay, so here's the conversion kit. It's just these three pieces. And the nut on here that has the pin built into it goes on first with the bearing repacked in there. So this will screw on. So we won't need this nut again. So that will screw on and then all this will go on. So we'll get that on next. All right, we've packed some new grease in there and this has been cleaned and packed now. So now we're gonna Slide that in place. And then on the conversion, you wanna grab, like I said, the nut with the pin on it, which is the other one. You saw that's, that washer's kinda of hanging onto it. So I'm just gonna take this and flip it over. Grab that. So there's the pin there. So now this just screws on like this. It's kind of tight. You know what? Yeah, it almost feels like it's trying to cross thread or something. So it feels nice and loose until it gets to one spot there and it just don't feel like it wants to go. Hmm. All right guys, so we got it on there and it was difficult to get it lined up. The threads on the inside of this kit were not very good at all. I mean, we tried to, to clean them up. They were they were not straight and they were like jagged. So it's tight the whole way. So we're just having to type it on, uh, tap it on here. So, um, and like, again, if you bought the socket, you could just use a socket, but we don't have that. So we have to guess. So, okay. Once we got it all the way on there, those threads, finally cleaned up enough to where it's actually smooth. So these things are just crappy made, weren't yeah, they? Right. It's, just, it just... it's really just not manufactured right. The the threading process, when I cut the threads in this thing, was just crappy, but now it's forced its way to smooth now. So now what we got to do is get this tightened up against the bearing. And it says to go about 35 foot pounds to seat the bearing down into the hub. And then you want to back it off about a quarter of a turn and then tighten it up to about 16 foot pounds. And that's the stock rating. Now they said, if you have bigger tires and stuff like that on your Bronco or Ranger, you may want to bump it up just a little bit more. Essentially, you just want to make it tight to where it ain't loose and everything can still turn. So right now we're going to tighten it down and then loosen it back up and then try to remake it you know, snug again. So go ahead and do that. Get her good and tight. Okay, we're getting there. Yeah, so that's see that's probably that's seat in the bearing. That's, that's probably about thirty five pounds. I mean, it don't take much to get thirty five pounds. Uh -huh. You just want to seat that bearing, and we'll back it off a little bit, and then make sure that we're still nice and tight and snug. It's not uh, not real scientific. So that's loose, and now now you want to just tighten everything up, make sure it can still turn. Okay, make sure everything's still free. 
So it feels pretty good. What'd you think? That time a few times. A little more. That's probably it. What you think? Yep. But turn it with your hands, see if you think. Feels pretty good? Yeah. Feels about right, don't it? Yeah, ain't no play or nothing. No play. Yeah, but that's just that's, snug. It's tight. Yeah. Think we should loosen it? Or you think it's probably good? I think it's good. Okay. All right, so the next thing we do is grab the washer. And this is your keyway now. This will actually slide into here. And then it's supposed to drop into one of these. If it doesn't fit one way, you can flip it over because these holes are not perfectly around. And then that will get you into one. And that looks like it worked. There you go. Okay, next is our outer one. And this is gonna be nice and terrible again. It may have cleaned it well. And it, it only cleaned that one. Yeah, the, yeah, the the hub was fine. It's this conversion kit that's not exactly right. So you just gotta get it lined up with what straight may be. I mean, because it don't even, see, look at that. It's like you get it on there and it starts dropping in. It's probably helping us just ruin the threads on itself. Just gotta find the find the spot, roll it backwards. There it is, and yeah, it's nice and nasty, but that's on there. So this one is supposed to get down to 150 foot pounds. So this one just needs to be really good and tight. So make sure that's not coming off there. We'll hammer it down. Okay. So that outer one is pretty tight. You know, tighten her up. Make sure it's not coming off, and it's good. This one, mine has the thrush washer and the splined washer. So yours may not have that, depending on if it's a Ranger or a Bronco, or a little different. Push that back. Now we've got our gap there. Now we're gonna put our C-clip, snap it back onto there. like an expert. And that's done. Last thing is grab this hub and get it stuck on there. I'm gonna have to lift that bag off there. There's an O-ring The O-ring goes in the bag right here. Yeah, gotcha. Ooh, it's kind of loose. <laughs> Look at that. High quality. I'm very impressed with these, to be honest with you. I just need to put a little grease to hold this in place. Yeah, it won't fall down. That's just going to fall off. Yeah, stick a little grease on there. And none of the instructions I've saw said put any grease in there, so I'm guessing they're factory grease to the correct amount. This just drops into that little channel there. Look how loose it is. Yeah, I know. It's just not. That's why I decided to put some grease on it to hold it in place. That's it. And then if you have the clips, you want to snap those on there, which I guess mine would have probably lost years ago. There we go. That's done. Now we just put the wheel on. Put the wheel on. Do the outside. All right, guys. So right now it's in free mode. I'm going to turn it to lock. Okay. Now if I turn, the axle over there is turning. See that? You see that? Yep. Yeah, it's working. Okay, so now if I go back to free mode and I keep turning the same way, it stays locked. But as soon as I go back, listen to this. Clunk. And now it's unlocked. Yeah, now it's not working. It's now it doesn't free. work. So these hubs are gonna work great. I think that's that's good. We did it right. So now we just gotta get the other side, throw this wheel on. All right, we're in the truck. Uh, we got the front hubs locked and now we're going to throw it in full high and see what that feels like and then full low. We're kind of on a slight hill out here in the field, so try it out. Okay, first thing we're going to do is full high. Okay, and my light's out, but you can't hear it all clicking and working. So this should be full wheel high. So now let's go. Yep, and it feels like it's pulling fine and full wheel high. Because normally, when the hubs weren't locking all the way, it was just smooth.
suspended right here. Oh, spun right down. Oh. What's that in? I'm full. Uh, I wonder if it's spinning the front. I can't even hold it back with the brakes on. That's that's it's amazing how much lower they go. Well, let's go on down in here and see if we can get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you got a four wheeler. It's like okay. Frank at least got us a trail down in here now. Yep. A little bit of an area. I can't believe how many trees are in here. I've been down here since I was a kid. So we don't have enough fuel pressure to make it run correctly and it's slowly going out so what i'm having to do you can hear it, how bad it sounds it sounds super goofy right now yeah so it'll let it prime back up and then it'll run right yeah so but that's it guys we got the manual hubs on it was a fairly easy job nuts were a little weird to mess with but that's it appreciate y'all watching have a nice day